All right, I just had to do a video on this. This was rather hilarious to say the least. Uh, just another addition to the long list of failures by woke liberal SJW Disney. Now, I mean, when it comes to the Indiana Jones franchise, I mean, it was, you know, I enjoyed it as a child. I haven't seen it in quite a while. The, the last, last film I saw uh, was, I can't remember, it was at least over a decade ago. I haven't seen it in quite a while, but uh, essentially they had this fifth this fifth film that came out that essentially really nobody asked for, and, and you know I think even George Lucas himself really had no part in it whatsoever. But uh, in typical woke liberal SJW Disney fashion, they managed to slip in all these types of ideologies. They slipped in this feminist uh, self insert of Kathleen Kennedy, the, the uh, uh, president, the, the the disgraced leader of Lucasfilm, and. It just now it's become another addition. And by the way, too, apparently the budget of this film was bigger than the previous four films combined. So gives you an idea of how much money they're going to be losing. Uh, but I'm not going to read the article. But essentially, what's going on is that it's set to fail. It should come as a shock, really, because it seems that everything that woke liberal SJW Disney, whenever they try to insert their woke liberal feministic ideology into it, it's just doomed to fail. But Says your own game spot, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny could struggle to make a profit after $60 million debut. Now remember, this film had a budget of, I think, up to $300 million. So let's just factor in all the, all the factors. So $300 million budget, that's not including the, the cost it had to pay for the marketing, the advertisement, plus the theaters get part of the, the uh, money as well. So just to break even, you'd have to, they'd have to make around... I don't know, 900, 800, you know, 800, 900 million dollars. That's just to break even, let, let alone if they're actually going to make a profit. They'd have to have like over a billion dollars to say the least. But it looks like that's not going to happen. It looks like they're not even going to come close to breaking even. So, uh, but it says the film is reported to uh, have a production budget of $295 million. Therefore, uh, and that's before the marketing expenses, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny officially opened to theaters on June 30th. But the film technically debuted on uh, Thursday night with the first preview screenings. The film, the movie earned $7.2 million from these previews in the U.S. To kickstart the film's first weekend at the box office. The first weekend numbers are in and the movie earned $60 million in the U.S. But uh, below the $65 million it was projected to make according to Variety. Now, it's just the opening weekend, but given the reviews of this thing, it's not going to end well. $60 million is a big number, but The Dial of Destiny is one of the most expensive movies to be made in the history of filmmaking, carrying a gargantuan $295 million budget. What's more is a $295 million budget does not cover the marketing and promotional costs. The Dial of Destiny earned another another $70 million from international markets for its first total... Oh, sorry, for its total first weekend global start of 130 million. For comparison, The Flash made 139 million globally during its first weekend worldwide, and that movie cost about 100 million less to produce. Comparing the last Indiana Jones movie, The Dial of Destiny opened uh, well below 2008's Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, that, that's the one I was thinking of. That's the one I, I saw, I, I last remember seeing at least about a, about a decade ago. Um, says that which earned 100 million for its first for its opening back then. The Dial of Destiny should benefit the 4th of July holiday in the U.S. Well, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, it says in the article, Variety report that Dial of Destiny is turning a profit uh, might be Indiana Jones' greatest challenge yet. The, the uh, Dial of Destiny, the first Indiana Jones film since 2008's Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, that movie didn't get the hottest review scores. Well, I kind of enjoyed it when I saw it. I mean, I personally didn't understand the kind of... I didn't really totally understand the hate it got. But then again, when I was watching it, I didn't really care about plots. All my 10-year-old my, uh, brain could process was all the cool action scenes, pretty much. So that's probably why I enjoyed it when I first saw it. But it says... Uh, they uh, had 100 million for its opening weekend, going on 307, 317 million statewide and 473 million internationally for a global haul of 790 million. Uh, and that's all. Uh, so when all is said and when all is said and done, Ford was expected to hang up the fedora and the whip after the Dial of Destiny. Saying recently he has done with the character beyond the Dial of Destiny and a reported TV show for Disney Plus. Wolfenstein developer Machine Games is developing a new Indiana Jones game. Uh, Beth. Sheeta, whatever you say, it, uh, boss Todd Howard, a big fan of the series, is executive producer on the forthcoming title. A bunch of stuff that really isn't related to the whole thing, but the bottom line is that this film is set to fail. You know, it's another IP that Kathleen Kennedy and woke liberal SJW Disney is going to fail as they have it in their grasp. They, they already pretty much butchered Star Wars uh, miserably. I mean, I remember when the sequel trilogy came out, I only saw the seventh one in theaters. When the uh, eighth film came out, I really didn't. I didn't really care for it that much. I didn't go see it. Neither did I, did I go see the ninth film because at the time I really just didn't care a whole lot about it. And now, from what I'm hearing about, it, I'm glad I didn't. 
Uh, but the bottom line is, is that whenever they insert this kind of ideology, because really, you look at the plot of the film, Indiana Jones is like this depressed, from what I've heard about it, from what I've heard about the plot, uh, it's basically, he's, he's like this depressed old man who's, you know, essentially, essentially he's kind of like a depressed war veteran who lost his son in the Vietnam War, and then basically have this, this feministic female character come in and start you know, pushing him around, and essentially steal the show, even though the, the film is about him, allegedly. So, it just, it, it's, it's just more feministic ideology. That's all that it is, from what I've heard about it, from what I can grasp about what I've been told. So anyway, just another IP they're going to destroy. Not a shocker, really, when you get down to it, because every single one they have, uh, they purchased, they just butcher when they insert this type of woke liberal SJW garbage into it. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.